In today's video we are going to be connecting to our Arduino board with Python and controlling a servo motor with it. First of all, open up Arduino ID. Then connect your Arduino to your computer via USB cable. Now back in the ID, select your board, here mine is Arduino Uno 3. Then go to File, then Examples, then Firmata, then Standard Firmata. This will open up a new script. We can close the previous screen. Then if we click Upload, the script will be uploaded to the board. We can now close Arduino's ID. Now that we have the script installed on our Arduino, let's set up Python to be able to read and write to our board. Click on the Windows search bar and type CMD, then enter to open up command prompt. From here we need to install a library, type, pip install pi firmata then press enter. This will make the pi firmata library available in Python. Now open up Python's idle. Let's create a new file and name it Python Arduino Connection. We can now import the library that we just installed. So from PyFirmata, import Arduino and Servo as we will be connecting to a servo motor. We will also be using the time library so import it here. To connect to our board we can type board equals Arduino and then specify what port the Arduino is connected to which in this case is COM3. Now unplug your Arduino as we will be connecting wires to it. Here I will be using a micro servo. The specific make is SG90, but you can use whatever compatible servo you have. On this model, the brown wire is the ground wire, the red wire goes to voltage, and the orange wire goes to a numbered pin on your Arduino. We can use male-to-male -male jumper wires to connect to the servo. Here I'm using the same color wires as the servo wires so that it is easier to tell which ones are which. Now we can connect the other end of our male jumper wires to the Arduino board. As I have matched the jumper wire colors to the servo color wires, I know that brown goes to the ground pin. Red goes to the 5 volts pin, and we will put orange in digital pin number 9. Now that our servo is connected to our Arduino, we can plug the Arduino back into our computer. Now back in Python's idle, we can create a variable named pin 9 and define it as board.digital and then the number 9. On the next line down, we can then set the mode of this pin to a servo. Servo pins take an angle. My servo has a movement range of 180 degrees. Let's pass the angle of 0 to it by using the right method and giving it a value of 0. If we now run the code, we shouldn't get any errors and the servo might move to angle 0 depending on what its current position was. Let's now type a few more write statements to our servo. Between each write statement, let's add a pause by using the time.sleep method. If we enter 2 then the script will pause for 2 seconds before running the next line of code. Let's change the angle to 180, then add another sleep statement for 1 second, then back to angle 0, then sleep again. Then finally move the servo to angle 90. Let's run the code and see it in action. Here my servo was already in position 0, so it won't move for the first write statement, but for the second write statement, it moves 180 degrees, then back to 0, then to 90 degrees. Let's put the statements so far, after the initial write to 0 statement, inside a function so that it doesn't run automatically when launched. If we wanted to move the servo incrementally over a longer period of time, rather than moving straight to a position, we could use a while loop and move the servo by 1 degree each loop. Here as the max degree of movement is 180, we are entering 180 as the range for our for loop. We can then put a time sleep so that for each loop, the script will pause by a small duration. Increasing the duration of the sleep will slow down the movement of the servo. Next let's write a for loop to reverse the direction of the servo. We can do this by setting the range start as 180, the end as 0, and the increment as minus 1. Then we do another write statement based on this range and another time sleep. Now if we run the code again, our servo will move from 0 to 180 degrees slowly, then back from 180 degrees to 0 degrees. It will continue in this process in a loop as the code is contained within a while loop.
Let's now look at creating a user interface that can update the servo based on the user input. First put the while loop inside of a function so that it isn't called when the script initializes. Then import the tinter library as tk, which we can use to create our user interface. Then we can create a basic tinter window and set its state to zoomed which will open in full screen. Set the background to black and the title to Python Arduino Servo Example. Then close the main loop window by typing window.mainloop at the bottom of the code. If we now run the script we should have an empty black screen. That's great! Let's now create a few buttons to display in the window. We will need a button to increase the current servo angle, a button to decrease it, and a button to apply the rotation. Start by creating our first Kinter button called button1, which will have the text of rotate. When it is clicked let's call a function called servo rotate. Create another button with the text of a plus symbol and a width of 3 that calls the function plus rotate. And finally another button with the text of a minus symbol which calls a function called minus rotate. Then let's write a few place statements to place these buttons on the screen. We can now create an entry box that will display the current servo rotation, as well as allow us to type a new value in, which will be applied to the servo when we click the rotate button. Call this entry 1 and insert the value of 0 in it so that when our window first opens, the text will be a 0. Then place it on the window. Let's finish up by creating our three functions which are the servo rotate function, the plus rotate function and the minus rotate function. We can just put the placeholder pass statement in for now so that we can test if our code works so far. If we now run the script we will see our buttons and entry box on the screen. Let's now code the functions for our buttons. We can start by coding the plus rotate and the minus rotate buttons. For the plus rotate function, remove the pass statement. We will need to get the value from our entry box. So create a variable called value1, which uses the dot get method to get the text from the entry box. As we want to increase the value of our entry box, first we have to delete the current contents of the box so use the delete method. Zero to end just means delete all the text from the start to the end position. Then create a value2 variable that is the integer conversion of value1 plus 10. We will need to run a check to make sure that the value isn't above 180. So write an if statement, if the value is above or equal to 180 then set the value to 180. Finally we can convert value 2 to a string and insert it back into the entry box. We need a similar function for the minus rotate function, so copy the plus rotate function and paste into the minus function. Instead of adding 10 each time, we need to minus 10 each time. We also need to change the if statement to a less than symbol and check if it is less than or equal to zero. If it is we can set the value to zero. If we now run the script and press the plus button, it will increase by 10 each time, but it won't go past 180. If we do the same with the minus, it will take away 10 each time but won't go past zero. Now that we've got that working, we can finally write the code for our rotate button which will take the value from the entry field and apply it to our servo motor. Remove the pass statement from the function, then create a global variable called current rotation, then get the text value from our entry field. As we're passing the value to our Arduino, we need to make sure that the value can be converted into an integer, so we can use a try statement to handle any errors. If there is an error, we can set the angle to zero. Now like we did in our other functions, we can create an if statement that checks if the current value is over 180, if it is then set it to 180, we can do the same to check if the value is under 0. We now only want to increase or decrease the current rotation of our servo motor by the angle we supply minus the current angle of our servo. 
For instance, if our servo is set to 170 degrees and we type 180, then there is only 10 difference, so the servo only needs to move 10 degrees. Now we can use the right function for pin 9 and set its value to the variable amount to rotate. The last thing we need to do is create the current rotation variable and set its default value to 0. Now if we run the code and change the values in the entry field and press the rotate button, the servo angle will change according to the entered rotation value. This concludes the video of how to work with Arduino in Python and covers the servo motor setup. There are many more features that we need to cover, such as reading from a pin and writing to a standard pin that isn't in servo mode, as well as a bunch of projects that can get us familiar with writing Python code for robots. Like and subscribe for more videos on this subject. See you in the next one.